Okay, the Favorsky rearrangement is a reaction that occurs when you expose an alpha halo ketone to a basic environment. So, typical uh, substrate might be cyclohexanone, so 2 chlorocyclohexanone. The alpha position we have a halogen, alpha halo ketone, and we're going to put it into a, a aqueous base environment. So we're going to use sodium hydroxide. You can of course use methoxide, ethoxide, alkoxide in general, and for some substrates you can even use amine bases. So the first thing that happens is something that you should be very familiar with, which is that we form an enolate. So I'm drawing the positive and negative charges, uh, and I'll draw in the enolizable hydrogens. And the enolate always forms by abstracting uh, or by deprotonating the carbon that is not the halogenated carbon. So obviously you could deprotonate this carbon, but if you do the enolate, it's a reversible process and you'll just reform the ketone and the reaction can't take place. So take that proton, form your carbon-carbon double bond and form your oxide. And There's your enolate, we still have the halogen there, and we still have one hydrogen left. So that should be a very familiar step. What happens next is slightly more unusual. So we're going to go through this mechanism once, and then we'll come back to talk about the finer points of it and one or two intricacies. Reform your carbon oxygen double bond, nothing strange there, and then this carbon is a nucleophile, nothing strange there. You've seen this in a lot of different reactions. But in this case it's going to attack the carbon with the halogen on it and the halogen is going to leave. And once we've done that, if we dry out everything that's there except for what's changed, we can see what we now have. So we took one of the lone pairs in the oxygen, reformed the carbon-oxygen double bond. We've taken this pair of electrons that was the carbon-carbon double bond. We made a new carbon-carbon bond and we kicked out the chlorine and we now have a cyclopropanone. Cyclopropanones, um, because of this ring strain, ideally the bond angle here would be 120 degrees. It's inside a triangle, so it's constrained to be almost 60 degrees. So these are really easily attacked by a nucleophile because when you do that, you relieve some of the ring strain because your bond angle becomes 109.5 degrees. So we've been doing this in an aqueous sodium hydroxide reaction. There is hydroxide uh, plentifully in this reaction. So I'll just put in plus our hydroxide. And now our hydroxide is going to attack the carbonyl and make a tetrahedral intermediate. So the hydroxide attacks this double bond breaks and oxygen gets that pair of electrons all to itself, hence the negative charge. This doesn't hang around for a great deal of time and it's going to reform the carbon-oxygen double bond and it's going to break one or, one or either of these, one of these two bonds. In this case it doesn't matter which because this is symmetrical, but the one that is going to break is the one that will more uh, readily sustain a negative charge on the carbon. So typically more substituted or uh, conjugated or things with electron withdrawing groups are going to be able to better sustain negative charge. But in this case it doesn't matter. So let's push this out. And if we draw that out, we're going to see that we have produced... So I'm going to draw it out exactly the same with the same bond angles, just so we can follow what's happening, except for what we've gotten rid of. So. We took this negative charge, or one of those lone pairs, formed a new carbon-oxygen double bond. We took this pair of electrons and we've put them onto this carbon. Now you'll see in the starter page that I put them inside square brackets to indicate that this is not a, a long-lived species. This is just a transient uh, intermediate. In fact, this carbon with a negative charge is in the same molecule as what is now a carboxylic acid, but it's also in water. 
So this will very, very quickly take up a proton, and because this is in base, it'll very, very quickly lose a proton. So what we end up with is our carboxylate and hydrogen here. And what we've done is we've contracted the ring, so we start off with a six-membered ring, we now have a five-membered ring, and if we want to recover that back out, if we were doing it normal, uh, or if we were doing this in the lab, we'd add in some acid at the end, and we get back our carboxylic acid. And obviously all the other hydrogens are in there, but I just had that one drawn in for mechanistic clarity at the beginning. Um, Excellent. So, where are the complications? So imagine we do it with this substrate here. Um, so, this is an alpha halo ketone, but this carbon here doesn't have any enolyzable protons. Can't be um, can't be deprotonated. So how can this mechanism proceed? Or what possibilities are available for it to proceed? Well, the carbon ion can still be attacked, so we're going to do this again uh, in sodium hydroxide solution. So Na plus OH minus the hydroxide is what's of interest to us. Um, and the sodium hydroxide can still attack, if it can't enolyze, it can still attack and form a tetrahedral intermediate. And if we look at that tetrahedral intermediate, it might look somewhat familiar. Sorry. Um, so if you've seen the benzylic rearrangement, you'll know that something like this allows for Migration. Well, exactly the same thing can happen here. We reform the carbon oxygen double bond, and this can migrate over as the chloride leaves. So, in the benzylic rearrangement, this would be a ketone and you'd be forming an alcohol. In this case, the chlorine leaves, and we have something quite similar to the benzylic rearrangement. So, if we look at the product of this reaction, uh, we draw it out exactly as it was, except for what's moved. Except that I'm going to take a liberty here and I'm going to move this because this bond is gone now. I'm going to draw it out as if it were down here, just because otherwise we'll be drawing in on top of ourselves. And the chlorine is still up there. So there was a carbon, sorry, there was a carbon oxygen single bond. We took the lone pair and created a new carbon 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 oxygen double bond. We took this pair of electrons that was here and is now, or was here and is now migrated, and we took that pair of electrons and gave it all to the chloride. So it is possible to do the Favorsky rearrangement even if there is not an enolyzable proton opposite the carbon with the halogen on it. So in that case, it will go through this mechanism. How do we know that it goes through this mechanism or forms a cyclopropane at all? So one thing that you might have noticed if you're familiar with Baldwin's, Baldwin's rules is that this step here actually disobeys Baldwin, Baldwin's rules. We're doing an um, enol endo exotet cyclization. So what does that mean? Well, it's an enol. The ene is endo to the ring that we're going to form. This is a tetrahedral carbon and it is exo because the chloride is leaving outside the ring, it's not going to stay within the ring. So they are not favoured under Baldwin, Baldwin's rules. That shouldn't really happen. Well, if you look at the title slide, you'll see that it's also postulated that it happens uh, with spontaneous departure of the chlorine and then uh, disrotatory electrocyclization. So we can explain that either way. Um, I'm not too concerned with it, depending on uh, where you're uh, studying organic chemistry. You might find this more or less upsetting, but it's perfectly satisfactory as an explanation as to what happens. But also we have to consider, well, how do we know that the cyclopropane exists at all and that it doesn't all proceed through this mechanism? Well, to do that, 
we have to look at another substrate. Well, let's examine these two substrates and we can contemplate what we would predict if there's a cyclopropane intermediate. So we'll have a look at the mechanism for this and we will also have a look at the mechanism for this molecule. So if the mechanism was a benzylic mechanism then this carbon in this case would have to migrate over here and in this case this carbon would have to migrate over here because the chlorine would leave. So if it's a benzylic mechanism we would get two different uh, we will get two different products. On the other hand, if it goes through a cyclopropyl intermediate, then the first thing that's going to happen, I'm going to skip a few steps here, the hydroxide would deprotonate one of these hydrogens, form the enolate, form the cyclopropane, and our cyclopropane would look something like this. Again, for this, deprotonate here, attack, and our cyclopropane is going to be the same cyclopropyl intermediate. So the same cyclopropane or cyclopropanone in both cases. In which case, we could reasonably expect that these two substrates, even though they're different, would give us the same mixture of products. If you were to pre predict the product of this reaction, so we'll Add in a second hydroxide. This is done in the presence of sodium hydroxide, of course, as is this one. This is going to attack, form our tetrahedral intermediate. And one of the groups is going to leave. And the question is, which is going to have the greater ability to stabilize the negative charge? Well, of course, it's going to be the carbon with the uh, benzene ring on. It's going to be the benzylic carbon. So, our product, in this case, is it's going to be uh, 3-phenylpropanoic acid. Um, that hydrogen will transfer and you'll get your carboxylic acid back again. So because both of these substrates give us the same product, we know that it goes through a common intermediate, that it goes through a cyclopropyl intermediate. And it is only if there is no enolizable proton. So if there is no proton in this position, do you get the benzylic mechanism. Otherwise, it goes through a mechanism where the cyclopropyl intermediate occurs. All right, that's all for now. If you have any questions, post them below. Uh, there's a little bit more information in the description below in terms of where these uh, reactions are done, if you want to check out the papers. That's all for now. Bye.